All right, church family, we're, we're back with another short promotional video. And as I said, we are doing uh, two uh, successive you know, one month uh, men's studies for the men's breakfast study in the mornings uh, beginning, uh, I think, September 9th. It's a Thursday morning. And after we do the one month study on the sacraments, we're going to do a, a brief one month study on the Reformation and the Reformers and their response um, to the Roman Catholic Church. And so, Given the brevity of it, I'm going to try to be more comprehensive in the sense of the width of it than necessarily the depth of it. Um, but it should be a great discussion and a great time. And as it leads up to October 31st, and for many people, they they, they acknowledge and, and go out and trick or treat and, and do a Halloween party. But uh, really, for for um, uh, for for what I look forward to on on October 31st is Reformation Day, and Reformation Day um, is is where we separate, uh, celebrate the Reformation. Uh, of the church and the renewal of the gospel in the church. And we see the light of the gospel breaking through again in the darkness of superstition um, and all the speculation uh, at the time in the medieval Roman Catholic Church that was recovered that God used powerful agency through many reformers. Of course, the two most famous and most important were Martin Luther and John Calvin. Um, so we're going to do a four-week study on the Reformation those two reformers specifically and their response and their opposition to Rome. Uh, so two, two books uh, I'll be working from that are excellent on Martin Luther. There's so much on these reformers. You have to be a little bit uh, picky on what you use. But, but two works would be, I think, helpful for us as we work from uh, what is the Reformation? Why did it occur? And, and what, what, what do these two men have to do with the renewal and reform of the church. How are they the same? How are they different? It's gonna be interesting to see and how these two different traditions, Protestant traditions of Lutheranism and Reformed come out of the Reformation, but both Protestant. Um, so the two books I'll be working from is one, a biography, kind of a, um, a critical biography of Martin Luther that was done by he uh, he Heiko Obermann, who is, I, I believe, the philosophy and history professor at uh, Arizona University, if I remember, for some time. Uh, but he wrote this compelling biography a number of years ago that's kind of acclaimed in its own right, even though there are so many biographies on Luther. It's called Luther, Man Between God and the Devil. Um, what a title, right? And it's a really good take on the, the sociology, the historical sense, um, the, the biography of Martin Luther, and really the discoveries that he had at the time. Probably less focused on, of course, the theology, the, the disagreements per se with the doctrine, though it's in there. It's really more of the, the um, history and the critical uh, narrative around the historical circumstances within medieval Europe and medieval Germany. It's a fascinating book uh, and, and very compelling, and, and I think it'll be helpful in our discussion. The second is a contemporary um, overview of Martin Luther's theology done by a fairly conservative German uh, scholar, uh, Oswald Bayer, uh, called Martin Luther's Theology, a Contemporary uh, Interpretation. And I've read a lot of that book, and it's very helpful uh, And I think what will be a, a, an arresting discussion of Martin Luther's rediscovery of the gospel, as well as his mission to throw out the devil from the church. That's really what he believed. Uh, it's pretty, pretty fascinating, pretty compelling stuff. And of course, the other great reformer, uh, though there are many, uh, but, but the most well-known and probably the most important will be John Calvin. And we'll see how Calvin has a similar goal with Luther, though actually Calvin agrees a lot more in the way you do method and theology with Melanchthon than he does with Luther. Uh, but it's pretty fascinating uh, the way that they uh, can join in this Protestant uh, reformation of the, of the medieval church at the time. But Calvin really is a, a sec second generation uh, to Martin Luther. So it's not the same exact time, but really comes alongside as a second generation reformer after Zwingli and others. And so it's important to kind of understand that uh, they're coming from different places, a little bit in different times, so there's a little bit of overlap too. Um, but it's fun to see where they link up and where they don't. Um, and so while they link up with Reformation needed, the, the point of entry into the disagreement with Rome is different, and that's what makes it fascinating. Of course, we're going to be using the Institutes of the Christian Religion, and I love the 1541 uh, French edition that's translated in English here by Banner of Truth um, uh, back in 2014 there by uh, Robert White. And to me, it's my favorite edition, though it says about the same thing as the 1559 final edition uh, is just organized and ordered a little differently. So we'll be working a lot from that um, as he talks about worship and reforming worship in the church. And then this really good, though, a little older book 
by William Charles Robin, uh, Robinson called uh, The Reformation of Rediscovery of Grace, kind of an old library copy that I have. Uh, but he does a great job of talking about that the preeminent theologian of the Reformation is John Calvin. Um, and then also talks about the article of the Reformation being justification and how that relates to sanctification. So we're going to be talking about all those issues. We're going to talk about the Reformation, why it was needed, really that the primary agents of the Reformation, first and second generation, Martin Luther and John Calvin, they had some similar goals and missions and agendas, but they also had some divergent goals and missions and agendas. We're going to talk about that and we're going to finish with how do they oppose Rome and we really see that through the, the, the way that they all agree with the, the, the five solas, right? So we're going to talk about the five solas as the Reformation cry at the end uh, of the four-week discussion. So that will be in October. And so we'd love for our men to sign up for both, of course, just this eight-week period of going through the sacraments and then also going through the Reformation as we lead up to Reformation Day on October 31st. I hope it'll be a time for you to learn, to discover, to rediscover the truth of the gospel in your life on a daily basis but also to connect with other men, to be encouraged, to, to grow in friendship, accountability with other men, and to grow in our discipline and giving our lives for King Jesus. Um, and so I hope that'll be an encouragement to you and that you'll get registered. Thanks.